What's up guys, Mike here, and today I'm going to be going on kind of a rant because there is a game I have been extremely hyped for for the longest time and I'm pretty sure that the hype for this game is completely dead after this news that just came out. Uh, shout out to my buddy Rock Taker, by the way, for talking about this with me over the weekend when we both found out about this. We both pretty much agreed that a good amount of hype for this game has died and I'm pretty much not buying this game day one now because of this. But, if you guys don't know, Arc System Works done fucked up. But uh, instead of me telling you, why don't we go to Gamatsu.com and we actually go look at this article together. Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle launches May 31st in Japan and Asia, June 5th in North America, adds DLC character Blake Belladonna. 20 characters in the base game, 20 characters of downloadable content. Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle will launch for PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and PC via Steam on May 31st in Japan and Asia. And June 5th in North America, developer Arc System Works announced the company also announced that Blade Galadana from Ruby will also appear as a playable character via downloadable content, and that a total of 20 characters will be playable in the base game with an additional 20 planned as DLC. So far, the 20 characters of the base game have been revealed, with Blade Galadana being the first add-on character to be announced. Here's the way they are going to be playing this DLC. DLC character all in one pack, you can buy, you can buy all the fighters at once. You can get Blake by herself. And then there's gonna be six volumes of characters with three fighters in each one, and then a special DLC character at the end. Which this, I am assuming, is probably gonna end up being Yang. In Japan, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle will cost 5,800 yen at retail and 5,370 via download. So basically, you're talking about 50 bucks overall to buy this game, regardless of US dollars. A Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle limited box will also be available and include the following. A special box with collaborative illustration by the artist behind Arc System Works, Atlas, French Bread, and uh, Rooster Teeth. Additional character all in one pack download code. Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle art book. A Cook Standy and a multi storage pouch for the Switch only. And a Cook Standy is for PS4 only. Early purchases for both the limited box. And the standard edition in Japan will include the original soundtrack. A demo of Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle featuring all 20 base characters will be playable at EVO Japan 2018. And yeah, January 6th to 27th, that's gonna be a thing. And here's the new trailer below, too, but I'm not watching that. Either way, as you can see, this, there's a lot wrong with this in general. First of all, our system works. You pretty much locked half of your roster behind a pay payment wall. What the fuck? It's bad enough that we gotta buy 20 characters as DLC when you know that... It, it, it's a really disgusting feeling knowing that you only have half the roster at launch if you want the rest of the roster, you have to buy the full roster. DLC in fighting games is nothing new, but this just takes it to a whole new low. I mean, I can give you some examples of some pretty good and some pretty shitty DLC practices for fighting games. Alright, let me look at this. Cause I have some, I have one or two games listed here, actually three. Uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, if you guys remember that awesome crossover. I enjoyed the game a lot, but I ended up putting down the game because there wasn't a lot of my favorite fan characters in there, and it turns out they were locked behind DLC. Out of the 38 characters that were in the game, you had to pretty much unlock at least a third of the roster through DLC for 40 bucks. There were 12 DLC characters out of 38 for 40 dollars. That's probably why Street Fighter Cross Tekken I don't think is as big now as it once was. And then we have a good way of using DLC, and I'm not just being biased because I love Nintendo, but I feel like Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS did it properly. You had your veteran characters like Mewtwo, Roy, and Lucas that were $3.99 for one version, or $4.99 if you wanted to get it on both 3DS and Wii U. And then you had Corrin that was a brand new character that didn't come with a stage, which was pretty much $4.99 for one version. Or $5.99 for both. And then you had all brand new characters that were amazing third party editions like Ryu, Bayonetta, and Cloud. They were $5.99 for one version and $6.99 for both, but they all included a stage with their characters. If you wanted to just buy all the fighters for one version, it was $34.93. And if you wanted to buy them for all for both, both versions, it was $41.93. Out of 58 characters in Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS, only 7 were locked behind DLC. Dragon Ball Fighter Z, the game that I really want to get into at the end of the month. 
you have 24 characters at base and then you have to buy an additional eight characters for about 35 bucks also my phone's going off either way but yeah eight characters for 35 dollars i don't know how i really feel about that but i'm gonna probably end up doing it because i'd rather pay the 94 bucks and get the additional eight characters for that i'm a huge fan of dragon ball z and i really think this game looks absolutely stunning but I feel like if the characters are fleshed out enough, I feel like the 35 bucks is probably worth the price. And I think you could probably pay like another 10 or 20 dollars to get the anime soundtrack and some voice announcer clips or whatever as well on Steam. At least that's what I've looked at. I don't know how it's going to work for any other systems because I'm PC Master Race. That's just my preference though. You guys can get whatever version you prefer. I still think Dragon Ball Fighter Z is definitely worth picking up, but back to the problem at hand though with Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. Half of your roster is locked behind DLC, and you know, and you know what really sucks more than that. Half the Ruby, half the main Ruby cast is also going to be locked behind DLC. Yang hasn't been officially announced yet, but since we know she's not in the base roster, we can only assume that she's going to be locked behind DLC along with Blake. I was not into the Ruby series until recently. My friends from all my friends from Switch and Play NYC were telling me to watch it. I absolutely love this series, and the fact that Ruby characters were in this game was going to be the gateway for me getting into the series. And the fact that half the fucking Ruby cast is locked behind DLC absolutely sucks. You basically have like 20 characters from Blaze Blue, Persona 4, Undernight, and Birth and Ruby probably being locked behind DLC. It's absolute garbage. I don't know exactly how it's going to work for DLC, but I'm assuming that most of the DLC is probably going to be Blaze Blue characters. They might throw in Ruby or Persona characters or Undernight and Birth characters that get tempted to buy the characters. But the fact that half the DLC is locked behind a payment wall absolutely sucks. Let me ask you guys a simple question though. If the main four characters from Ruby, Ruby, Weiss, Blake, and Yang, if they were all unlocked from the start in the base game of Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle and you had enough of your favorite Blaze Blue characters in there, would you actually buy the DLC packs? Now that you know that there's six packs of three fighters, let me know in the comment section down below, but I'm pretty sure if you're a hardcore Ruby fan and you got the four main characters of Ruby, unless they announce any more Ruby characters, I'd pretty much be satisfied. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Because we already know Blake and Yang are probably going to be behind DLC and maybe we may or may not get some more Ruby characters. I don't know how that's going to work. It really depends on how they do the DLC. The only way I can even begin to possibly justify this being an okay move to do, and this is really pushing it. If the game is 50 bucks at launch, and there's going to be six packs of DLC characters along with another character at the end, I would have to say in total all of that plus the DLC would probably have to equal about 70 to 75 US dollars. But I don't think that's going to happen. I know Arc System Works is out for that cash money. And it absolutely sucks that this is pretty much how they're going to do it. Now I can understand if they also needed to make time to put these characters in. Ruby characters are going to be brand new. I'm sure they have to work on all the sprite animations, getting the voice actors involved and all that shit. But for Blaze Blue characters that were already in the last game, which I believe was Blaze Blue Cro Central Fiction, all they would really have to do is copy and paste the characters and tweak them a bit and then put them into this new game. Which definitely doesn't take as much work as, like, say, maybe characters from Persona 4 Arena or Under Night and Birth, depending on how those games work. I'm not familiar with those. So you guys will definitely have to let me know in the comments section down below. But, regardless, it still leaves a very nasty feeling in my stomach knowing that half of the roster is locked behind DLC. I don't really know how they're planning to price it. I genuinely don't think I'm going to be buying this game day one now because of all this because it's absolute shit that half of the entire roster is locked behind DLC and maybe hopefully if enough of us end up speaking out maybe our system works will do something about it but I highly doubt it. Again it just sucks because only having 20 out of the 40 characters and having half the ruby cast locked behind DLC probably means that the story is probably not going to be as good either for why all these different franchises are clashing together this is pretty much a huge fan service i feel for all of these series especially fans of the ruby series and it's just gone to shit now i'm pretty sure that this is the fastest any hype has died for a fighting game in a long while i'm pretty sure it died faster than marvel's capcom infinite 
And yeah, I don't even know because Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, I was going to pick up that game too, but it honestly didn't appeal to me too much. Some of the graphics in that game were absolute shit and the hype of that game just completely died because of the way that they handled things. And Street Fighter V, I don't even want to get into that because they also fucked, Capcom definitely fucked up with Street Fighter V. I mean, I'm just a casual pleb when it comes to all these fighting games, but I did a little bit of research. But, either way, if, if you have half of your roster for a fighting game locked behind a paid DLC wall, there's a legit problem. I would understand if maybe five characters were locked behind the DLC wall. I could maybe understand maybe up to eight. Maybe even ten. Ten's probably pushing it a bit, though. That's like a third, that's like a quarter of the roster still. But... Fucking half the roster behind DLC, I can't even imagine to fathom how pissed off fans of the series probably are at this. I definitely want to know your rage and your frustration down in the comment section about this below too, because this was a game that I was legitimately going to get into. I have no idea who any of the characters from Blaze Blue are, but freaking Ragnar the Blood Edge looks pretty badass, and I, and I happen to like how Makoto Nagano looks also, because I like the fact that she's like a huge fist fight. She kind of reminded me of Knuckles a little bit from the Sonic series. But, I don't think I'm going to be picking this game up on day one anymore because of this. Because it's an absolute shame that half the roster is locked behind the paid DLC wall. I honestly don't blame people wanting to buy this game that end up not buying it now because of this. It's going to probably kill the entire franchise, for at least for this title, for a bit until they lower the price. Or they decide to get their shit together and make the prices a lot lower for everything. Or hopefully they'll take away all the DLC and they'll just release the initial 40 characters in the roster and then give us DLC. That would be the logical thing to do is to just give us the 40 characters and then give us additional DLC down the line. Don't go locking half of your roster behind the, the DLC wall, especially if you could just copy and paste the Blaze Blue characters right in there. It absolutely makes no logical sense. All this is really going to do to Arc System Works is legitimately kill any hype for this game. And it absolutely makes me very sad to see that, because this game looks absolutely gorgeous. Blade looks like a pretty sick character. I can't wait to see how Yang looks regardless. And, you know, I can't wait to see what other characters from Blaze Blue end up making into this game, because I was actually doing some video watching of all the other characters in Blaze Blue. There's some actual pretty good characters that actually look really sick that I hope make it into this game. But it's going to suck to have to buy them behind the paid DLC wall now. Either way though guys, I kind of wanted to make this RAM video to talk about this because it's absolute shit that this is even a thing, but uh, again, like I said, let me know down in the comment section below how you guys feel about this. Again, huge shout out to my buddy Rock Taker. I know we were supposed to do this video together. I'm sorry about not recording this with you when you were over here, but definitely go check him out and follow him on his Twitter. He's a huge person to go follow if you like fighting games. He really loves his Pokemon and he really is good with all fighting games in general. If you want to talk to him about any fighter games. Either way though guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely hit that like button. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Discord, and Twitch. All those links are down in the description down below. And until the next video, my fellow Monster Gamers, take care.